Look how pretty this is. I'm not a fan of getting darkness so soon. It's It's been a bit weird, you know. After the time change, things are quite dark early. Not used to that. But I'm trying to express the colors of our sky over there. And it's like purple, pink, something else. It's just incredible. Yeah, we've got some really pretty, look at that back there. West Coast has some really, really pretty sunset. Sunsets, I should say. Anyway, off topic, but heading to FedEx. Locally here, picking up a piece from FedEx delivers direct to Moses Lake. Uh, there were, I think, three or four, three for sure, maybe four brokers. I got to remember now. I can't remember 100% that posted this load. Um, one didn't answer at all. Uh, one answered thinking that it was going to deliver tomorrow. That's how they posted it. And then the third one answered, and then they answered me, no go, customer covered. Uh, and then after they answered me that, about three to five minutes later, I get a reply from one of the other ones that wasn't, you know, answering or, or being quiet, and then said, book it. Can you, oh, good, good with direct delivery. And I'm like, heck yeah, that's what we want is direct. That way I come back and, you know, sleep at home and then I'm home, you know what I mean? So it's 110 miles, loaded miles, to Moses Lake. 100 to 110, depending on where you're going to Moses Lake. Uh, picks up in Spokane, and they're paying 400 bucks for this thing. I was thinking bidding maybe a little bit less, but then I'm like, well, it's already evening time. Why am I going to bid less? Who else is going to be here in Spokane waiting for a load, going to Moses Lake? Maybe it's going to deliver tomorrow morning instead of direct. I'm kind of like, who, who's going to want to do that for any less? So I bid the load for 400 bucks, and, you know, God's help, we got it. So pickup is right now ASAP. It's at the airport. Um, there's a FedEx terminal there, so I'm waiting for their uh, numbers. They're supposed to provide me with the uh, pro number, which is the FedEx tracking number. Without that, they don't even bother loading you or, or even talking to you. So I'm just, like, literally less than five minutes away now. In today's video, it's gonna be raw because my camera's at home. It's getting uh, all the footage all coming off of it. So everything is coming off the camera and it's like, it was showing me something ridiculous. I think like over three hours uh, time-wise for all that stuff to come out of there. So. I've got a little bit of videos for you guys coming up, coming up, coming out. I'm still a little behind on them, or I was up to this point of today, which we'll see, you know, I I can't just post it right after or right, you know, as soon as I deliver, it doesn't work that way. You know, you got to get home, you got to edit it, you know, in between you got work, you got kids, you got family life, you have everything. I'm not like the other guys who have a cameraman chasing after them. Not yet anyways, because there's, you know, maybe when I reach 100,000 subscribers, I'll be able to afford to pay somebody to do this full time for me. But for now, I need you guys to subscribe. That way we can get there. That way you guys can get those videos right away, you know, a day or two later, whatever, at least at least a week behind, you know what I mean? It can't be, can't be the way it keeps going with a month behind or so on the videos. But hey, even for that, you know, I'm still thankful. There's work. People are, people are still shipping things, people are still receiving things, so in, in the perfect world when, when you have, you know, somebody running around behind you could film you and could do all the editing for you, things work out great, but I'm not at that point yet, which I need your guys' help with that, if anything, if you guys want me there. Look at that sunset, ooh -hoo -hoo. with an airplane in the background and a TCS truck. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I've showed you guys our terminal before, right? I mean, here's a part of it, which all the cargo, cargo things come through here. 
not just this building but right behind it and uh, and those buildings out there that's that's actually the FedEx one out there back there so hard to see on camera I guess on the phone I'm filming from the phone let me know how it looks I don't know some of the colors might actually look better as far as I can see anyways or maybe it's just because it's a big screen and I can see really good versus the versus the other camera I used to record everything but yeah so far the colors look great and look at that the sunset is just unbelievable that's how you want it to be look at all those colors up in the sky yeah that's amazing if you don't think so then you're not my friend I'm just kidding but maybe not Okay, we're good, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit too wide. No, that's good. Thank you. You want these? Yeah. The cheese and little chocks are great for little blocks, though. Yeah. Sticking under <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. That's it. You gotta strap it in and then go. So. Uh, apparently there's supposed to be a it's supposed to be a 48 by something pallet it ain't 48 by something it's like 50 59 and a half wide 59 and a half wide so a bit too wide well we got it it's okay she brought out an extra pallet put it on an extra pallet and then we got it in here so thank god that they're smart enough to do that because a lot of times we just get turned down drivers just get turned down and Nobody wants to really work with a driver. Here in, in our little town, you know, they know us, we know them, and we work together. This is how you're supposed to strap your freight in, guys. Crisscross, not just with one strap and flimsy, just to kind of say you did it and, you know, so somebody would get off your back, but actually do it the right way. I crisscrossed it, made it all tight, holding it good on the bottom or in the back, holding it good in the front. It ain't going anywhere, so that's it. Do it just like that if you've got E-Tracks. And if you don't have E-Tracks, I'd suggest getting some because it's better, easier, faster, and more secure to do everything if you have E-Track. Very quick. Very, very quick to get it done. still have 
the beautiful sunset. Still going on. Not everybody gets to see that out of their office window or out of their workplace, wherever they're working at. There's a, there's a chance, I don't know, Google says that they close at 6 p.m. My ETA is 6.30 p.m. So there is a slight chance that I might show up to a closed place if nobody stayed over there or if nobody's staying. But, I mean, it is a, tr a Peter built Peter built engines or something like that, something something like that, and it just the freight is actually an engine is look is what it looks like. So a lot of times these truck repair shops have somebody there late, and a lot of times they're even open 24 hours because they're out there doing repairs, 24 hour repairs for other people and all that. There's a lot of times somebody on call as well if needed to be. So I'm going to look through the paperwork while I'm driving and see if there's a phone number I can call, give them an ETA, and make sure that somebody will be there. And that's what every driver kind of needs to do, if anything, if it's a direct delivery. And there is a slight chance that, you know, we think that somebody might not be there. It's a good idea to look through the paperwork and, and you know, and, and check. I mean, worst case, if you're a driver and doing this kind of a load and you're driving and you get there and they're closed and it's supposed to be direct delivery and it's closed, well, it's not all that bad because you get to you get a layover pay on top of your current pay. So there's nothing, you would have been sleeping anyways, somewhere on site, near on site, somewhere else nearby. So it's not bad if you're actually having to go layover, unload in the morning instead of direct, and still get paid additional money on top of your current rate. That's how things work, so, you know, just part of the business. If, if, if brokers and their customers don't want to check, you know, don't want to do their part and verify the hours and all that kind of stuff before booking the load, then, you know, I don't feel bad charging them layovers. I really don't. That's just, you know, part of the deal, part of how it needs to be. Look at this beautifulness, oh my gosh. Come on guys. Where else do you get to see stuff like that? Where else? Only in driving, only if you're a truck driver. Well, I mean, you could possibly technically you know see them if you're like a cell phone tower guy if you're maybe like an uh, uh, an, an electri you know an electrician of some sort that's a pole climber you know and you're working late so you get to probably see that maybe if you're one of those crazy guys that goes and changes the light bulb on top of a big old tower three four hundred feet up in the air yeah some of those people can see it but usually they don't climb those towers at night when it's dark. Yeah, that's just, that's amazing. I don't even get to see it sitting in the office. And I sit in the office really late, really late most of the time. So, only in expediting, only in truck driving for the most part. Here we are and my doubts were uh, correct. They're only open until 6 p.m. So I'm like 30 minutes late, or after they closed. I'm gonna go look around, walk around the, the, the back place. Cause usually at the at these kind of places where it's diesel mechanics, a lot of times there's somebody somebody working late. A lot of times there's somebody on call. A lot of times somebody's working on some kind of an emergency. So I know 
that side is closed up, but you guys always got to do your research. I mean, you could text or call your dispatch and just say, hey, front door's closed, whatever. I'm going to go and... I'm going to go and uh, check everything else around the building, so that's what I'm going to do, hopefully. Hopefully there's somebody here, because I really don't want to lay over over here, 100 miles from home. And I don't want to go turn around and go 100 miles back home, then 100 miles back here again in the morning, then 100 miles back home. That eats away all my decent profit I had on this load, so. Well, we got some lights on in the shop. got lights in the shop but that's it there's nothing else going on we got chains on the chains on the gates <clears throat> this is their wool call area obviously it's just like a parts area so yeah <coughs> nobody's gonna be here Last time I did this in Seattle, oh, it's closed here, but I did that in Seattle and all the alarms turned on and everything, so service entrance would be right here, it's all locked up, all closed up, yeah, same thing, it says till 6 p.m., if you guys can see that. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Seriously, I don't want to lay over over here. But, I don't know. Might have to. What are you going to do? Or drive home, and then it eats away all your profit. Or all my profit, anyways. I guess we're going to find out. Definitely going to find out. There's no phone numbers to call. There's nothing to call. So just going to wait on broker's dispatch to see what they tell me. Good morning, everybody. I ended up staying. Um, they promised a layover, which I haven't seen yet. Um was gonna sleep on site and then I got hungry I went and got something to eat so came to the truck stop over here where across the across the street from where all the food was just slept here on you know just I don't know what it is maybe less than a less than a half a mile away from where the delivery location is so big trucks are over there and then they got a little parking lot here I'm not a fan of sleeping at the truck stops because it's too loud I'm a really light sleeper, but worked out today. Beautiful sunset out there, or I'm sorry, sunrise, and I'm ready to go back. So let's go back and get this unloaded and go home. Uh, I think it was like four hours it took them, and, and even after that, they said, please wait for confirmation, because I, you know, I even told them, hey, you know, driver's thinking about going home, sleeping at home, and they, they, they made up some story saying that it's against policy or something that we cannot go back cannot park somewhere where it's not safe how do you know where it's safe to park and where it's not safe to park it's just some excuses so whatever well let's go get it unloaded and go home take the next right onto road l northeast You gotta lift it up, pull it back, and then grab it again. There you go.
What's that? I'm not off the hook. The ground? Yeah, it looks like you are. But is there a way you can go tip it more this way? Do they tip this way more? No? The forks? Yeah, that 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 way it's not so I'll help you hold it that way we're not falling over hopefully. Just go super slow. <laughs> Guys, I 
thank you guys for watching. Whoever's tuning in now, you know, there's a lot more videos, over 300 of them you can go watch. All about the job, all about explaining how things are, how things work, what to get, how to do your van, and everything else. So I've, I've covered everything more than once already, so you just have to dig, dig in the library for those videos and find them. So, you guys again, God bless, we'll see each other next time when we see each other.